Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for not looking after a kid anymore? I, 27 male, used to live in a terrible apartment building. I had a neighbor right next to me called Sarah, approximately 24 female, who had a 6-year-old son Mark. I had lived there for 3 years, and moved out about 2 months ago. My grandfather passed away and left most of his money slash possessions to me and my sisters. It wasn't much after taxes but I was able to use it as a deposit on an apartment. Sarah and her son moved in about 4 to 5 months after I did, and although she didn't talk about it, I got the feeling that her ex hadn't been the greatest, police would come round occasionally to check she was okay, the kid was scared stiff of loud noises and yelling, etc. I work from home, data analyst, so was around a lot. Mark used to go to a preschool while she worked, and then after he started school, he was supposed to go to an after school child minding thing, Sarah works 10 am to 8 pm as a nurse aide. Problem is that, Back in March of last year, his after-school thing closed, and then a couple months later his school shifted all their learning online, while his mom only got busier because of the virus. I kept seeing him playing outside by the road or hanging off the balcony and was a bit worried for his safety, so started offering him hot chocolate and keeping an eye on him. About a week later, Sarah came by and offered me $20. She was very apologetic and explained that her parents disowned her and she couldn't afford a full-time nanny for him but also couldn't afford to quit her job to keep an eye on him which was basically her only other option. My older sister is a nurse, and I'd seen her looking shattered and with bruises on her face from her masks, so I felt really bad for them and offered to keep an eye on Mark while she worked since I was at home anyway and he's a cool kid. Long story short, I told Sarah in October I was moving out, and she was distraught about what she'd do with Mark, school slash childcare still hadn't reopened here yet. I offered for her to drop him off at my new place while she was working, as a temporary solution during the virus. This had been working for the last couple of months, until I received a letter from a lawyer basically informing me that Sarah was filing for child support against me, as I had taken on a paternal figure in Mark's life. I immediately called Sarah and told her to come get Mark. We had a massive fight because basically she thinks I can afford it, so why shouldn't I pay it? After she picked him up. I blocked her number and contacted a lawyer who to me that I would probably be fine as I'm not his dad, and I never offered to take care of him in any financial way. Sarah has been in touch with my sisters who think that I'm doing the right thing not paying, but I'm being a jerk by refusing to look after Mark anymore. I feel horrible since he's probably back to being stuck in those crappy apartment blocks again. But I also don't want to risk a court case. Am I the a-hole for refusing to look after him while she works? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You were being nice and Sarah decided to take even more advantage of you than she already was. The audacity of this lady. I seriously cannot even believe it. My jaw dropped reading this. I'm sorry you and Mark are dealing with this. My reaction exactly. Shocked. He is being a good guy and the poor kid has to suffer and lose his buddy because the mom is greedy. Sad. This is exactly why people don't want to do nice things. Not the a-hole. Why the hell? In any case, she burned that bridge. Sad the child will suffer for it. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. Not the a-hole and you did the right thing. You did a lot for her and she decided to abuse your friendship. You have to protect yourself, and if you continue to look after Mark, it would be a tacit agreement to her demands of the lawsuit and would no doubt work against you. I think he could argue that he was just a babysitter, she has no claim here. It's like if the parents sign any for tried to pull the stunt. No one would force a babysitter to pay child support. Based on what OP described, he was a cheap babysitter. Tiny update. Thank you for all the lovely messages, I can't see some of them because a reddit error keeps popping up, but I'm trying to read all of them. I've said this a few times in the comments but we'll put it here too, after what has happened, I have contacted child services, I haven't had an update from them, but I will post here if I hear anything. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to see or help my mom until she stops making my dad pay? This is a type of situation that I don't know much about and thought I was doing the right thing, but now that it's affecting people I genuinely care about and need both validation and or possible advice. I, 14 female, am my parents' only child together. My mom, 38, and dad, 37, divorced when my brother, 4, was a baby. I didn't understand it at the time. But I'm old enough to now realize that my mother cheated, and that it was clearly explained to me that my brother and I have different fathers. My brother's father isn't in the picture and my uncle and grandfather have taken up fatherly roles for him. 
My dad doesn't like my brother at all, although he does genuinely try to hide it from me and supports my decision to having a loving relationship with him. He's even helped me buy presents for him. I say this because I want to make it clear that my dad is in no way influencing my decision, and that I'm completely acting solo in this. My parents have 50-50 custody of me, and while they mostly communicate with text or emails about me, they'll sometimes talk in person during the drop-off if necessary. When my dad dropped me off back at my mom's, I could tell things were tense and that they were going to argue. My dad waited for me to get inside and once I was, he pulled my mom to the side and they ended up having a heated conversation. I'm not sure about the details, but it ended with my dad slamming his car and driving off. I asked my mom if everything was okay and she said it was fine, but later that night, I overheard my mom talking to one of her friends about my dad being upset about her intentions about raising child support. I was curious because it was always my understanding that there was no child support for me. Knowing my mom wouldn't give me an answer if I asked, I decided to snoop. To my shock and anger, I found out that despite my brother not being my dad's, he was paying child support for him. I was furious and called my dad to ask him if it was true. My dad did confirm that since my brother was technically born within the marriage and the bio dad was absent, he was on the hook financially. I hung up and confronted my mother and we argued. I admit I said some really nasty things and she grounded me for it. I countered back saying that her grounding was only good as long as I live with her and that I'm telling my dad that I want to live with him. Because of COVID I've been babysitting my brother a lot more and my mom depends on that. I told her that if she wanted me to keep helping or ever see her again then she needs to stop making my dad pay child support. I said it in anger, but I meant a lot of it because I don't think it's fair. But since then, I've been getting calls from my uncle and grandfather saying that I was disrespectful and needed to stay out of my parents' business. My brother also now thinks that I'm going to leave because I don't like him anymore, which wasn't my intent so am I the a-hole. Edit, just wanted to give more information about my dad and my relationship with him, because I want to be very clear about my dad because I see a few people trying to blame him for telling me. 1. Aside from things like Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, my dad has never lied to me about anything. For the most part, he's either hid things from me, brushed me off with the, I'll tell you when you're older type of phrases, or given me information in a kid-friendly way. Now that I'm getting older, my dad has agreed to be a bit more honest with me when I ask him questions directly, so long as I agree to be honest with him. 2. When I called my dad and asked him if he was paying child support for my brother, he asked me if my mom said anything to me about it. I admitted to snooping and then asked him directly if it was true. He tried to brush it off, but I pushed and then he answered yes. 3. My brother was conceived during my parents' marriage and he born a couple months before the divorce. Despite DNA proving that my brother wasn't my dad's kid, he was still put on the birth certificate since he was still my mom's husband, and the bio dad had already skipped out. My dad never had a relationship with my brother and didn't want one. 4. Someone in comments said that the child support could be automatic and that legally my father needs to report his yearly income and any raises but I don't see how my mom needs to spend the money she gets rather than just transferring it back once it's in her bank account. 5. I don't deny that my brother is innocent in all of this, and that he still needs support, but my dad is innocent too, and my mom needs to hunt down the loser she let knock her up for her money. I'm an American living in the US. Not the a-hole, your mom is trying to fleece your dad. I would be upset that one parent was trying to harm the other. If you move in with your dad, then it should at least mostly even out, at least for the next four years. She has to pay child support for you and he's required to pay child support for him. I know my dad makes more than her, so I don't think she'd pay as much as him. I googled it, and apparently some people can pay as low as $600. Ick. Yeah, this is a tough spot for you. But you're old enough to be able to say where you want to be and have that count for something. And it sounds like you're basing where you want to be on the type of persons your parents are. Take care and know that you need to do what is best for you, and if you don't respect and resent your mom, it will be better to live with your dad so you don't end up doing something stupid just to upset her. I'm not saying you will, but swear to God the teenage years are some wild times, and I am so thankful I'm over it. I'm mature enough to know that I will do something stupid to upset her if it's something ongoing, and I'm upset enough. Not the a-hole. Your mom is a shameless a-hole, and her uncle and grandfather are enablers. He's your dad. Of course it's your business how she treats him and forcing a man to pay for a kid that isn't his is as low as you can, sadly, legally go. Stand your ground and go live with your dad if your mom decides money is what she cares about the most.
not the a-hole, my parents are also divorced, and I was put in the middle of a child support battle when I was going to college, it has been terrible on my mental health to this day, I'm graduating college this year. In my opinion the only child your dad should be responsible paying for is you, and since there is no payment for you, there should be none. The marriage laws with his birth shouldn't affect your father since she broke the contract of marriage by cheating. It's a stupid law. If your mom can't support the kid on her own, she shouldn't have had him. The next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents to get their other kids to help out? I'm, 24 female, the oldest of 5 kids. There's, 16 male, 15 female, 13 male, and, 12 female, at home still. I moved out when I was 17, went to stay with grandparents, and I've been mostly estranged from them since. The reason? They had me young and my parents had more kids they could hardly afford. So, I was forced to sacrifice. Sacrifice my time by babysitting, sacrifice getting a filling lunch in school, still got one but they gave me less because I had allergies and they could no longer afford to buy as much alternatives for me, and I sacrificed having my own bed because we lived in a three bedroom house where the girls room had a double bed and a single instead of bunk beds, which sucked so much. I won't say they had it perfect either, but the weight of everything was put on me. The weight of the financial struggle, of needing childcare, of whenever someone was sick, it was placed on me, and my parents just kept having more for a while. And they would tell me we needed to shield my siblings from how tough it was. And it did hurt the relationship I had with them. They grew up feeling like I owed them, like it was my job to take care of them as basically equal to our parents. Now my parents have hit a very low point and both are working, my dad two jobs, because of the mess they created, and they asked me for help in the home. Basically, help make food for the kids and keep the house from falling apart. I told them to ask the other kids because some of them were old enough to help out more. They said I'm the oldest and should want them to have their childhood. I told them they took most of mine and turned me into an adult, and they will not get my help for anything again. They think I'm being ungrateful. I think they're selfish for asking for more. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Parentification of the oldest child is a massive a-hole move, one the child can rarely do anything about. And you're absolutely right, they took your childhood, they don't get to ask anything more of you. This, you don't owe them anything at all. Not the a-hole. You've already done a lot for them. Your priority now should be setting yourself up in life. I'm outraged for you that they would keep taking from you to give to the other kids. But they're also shortchanging the other kids. Teaching kids to do housework and be proactive and productive is hard work, those kids need to learn that stuff so they can grow into awesome adults. It sounds like you're already such an awesome competent person that they're trying to pull you in to do their work of passing that on. Bonus tip from someone who has lived some of this. Keep helping those kids out and developing a great relationship with them, they're gonna be great buds for you when they're all grown up. Just pick the ways you support them, make it count, and don't feel pulled into the day-to-day -day heavy lifting your parents should be doing. Look after you, and live your life. I told them they took most of mine and turned me into an adult, and they will not get my help for anything again. You are totally and completely justified here. All of your siblings are old enough to help around the house, you already sacrificed so much. Not the a-hole. But, you know who are huge a-holes? Your parents, for subjecting you to parentification and keeping having kids they couldn't afford. They get zero sympathy for having five kids they couldn't afford and then having the nerve to try and make their eldest responsible for them. The youngest is 12. All of those kids are old enough to feed themselves at least basic meals, watch themselves, and help out around the house. It sounds like in addition to parentifying their oldest, the parents may have done the opposite with the younger children and failed to teach them basic life skills. Not the a-hole and hold firm with those boundaries. Edit, also parentification is a form of child abuse. You should take a look at it, see what you think. 12 and up is definitely old enough to help around the house or at least make their own lunch. If you help, the kids will always be your responsibility, you'll always be the go-to. Distance yourself further if you need. Not the a-hole. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to give any money to my pregnant ex? My ex, 25 female, and I, 27 male, were together about 6 months, but during that time, we were free to see other people things weren't working out so we broke up. Over a month after that, she finds out she's pregnant and tells me baby is mine. But I already knew she was seeing other guys so it was also possible the baby isn't. 
She got mad that I was having doubts, but I said if we got a paternity test and it showed I'm the dad, then yeah, I'll 100% be involved. My ex didn't want that and she'd rather wait until after the baby is born to get a test done. So I said that's fine, it's her choice. But I won't get myself involved unless I know the baby is mine. Like I already know I could be set up for child support if I start helping out now, and then later it's revealed I'm not the father, I live in the US and have heard this stuff happens a lot. I'd rather not even risk it you know? She's about 8 months now and I have started saving up money, reading up some books, making shopping cart lists of baby clothes and furniture to buy in case I am the father, so it's not like I'm not preparing for this at all. So right now, money is tight with her since I know she's only working part time. She doesn't have the money for a baby bassinet or clothes because she practically lives paycheck to paycheck. She started asking to let her borrow money for baby stuff, but I've told her no. As far as I know, she doesn't have other family she's close to, and friends are the same as her with money. But I already said I'll start giving her money and helping out, once I know her son is mine. Otherwise, I'd rather not get involved. I've even told her to reach out to the other guys who could also be the dads but she said one is even more broke and the other she hasn't been able to contact. So for right now, seems like I'm the only one actually able to offer financial support. We have a couple mutual friends, and I'm getting crap from them because they know I have the money to help out. She could be the mom of my kid, so the least I could do is provide. They say they would if they had the money, since I do have the means and this baby could be mine, I should already be helping. They have a point. The baby could be mine and I'll be happy to help out once I know he is in fact mine. But everyone else is seeing it as I'm being too cold and inconsiderate. I don't think I am but want to know what others believe. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You don't owe her anything until you're sure of paternity. And to be honest if she can't afford to have a kid, regardless of who the father is, she shouldn't be having a kid. Took the words right out of my mouth. Let's not forget either that. I can't reach one guy and the other is broke is a her problem, and likely the only reason she's trying to peg OP as the father. I'm not sure why she would even keep a baby if she can't afford it, especially if two out of three of the possible fathers can't provide. Wouldn't want to be stuck paying for a kid that wasn't mine either. Seems like this girl really messed up, and if she is in such dire financial straits, it will only get worse after she delivers and can't work for a bit. You would think she would have gotten the test if she was hurting for cash that bad but the fact that she didn't shows me she thinks he probably isn't the father. I wouldn't help the ex at all, not financially or otherwise until he knows the paternity of the kid. Family court is a strange beast and I wouldn't give them any reason to make him responsible if the child turns out to not be his. Added to add, I just read that not only did you use protection, she did too. So that coupled with her not wanting to get the paternity test, tells me she doesn't think you're the father, she just thinks you're the best financial option, which you are. Don't help or give her a dime until paternity is established, because there's a huge chance it's not yours. You actually have friends who want you to give money to an ex-girlfriend who could be pregnant with another guy's baby? Tell those people to give her their own money, then wait for the paternity test. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Your legal concerns are extremely valid. You've offered her a compromise and she doesn't want it. Of course everyone around you would help if they could, but of course they also never will. If you want them off your back, start helping out in ways that aren't monetary. Offer to cook her some food and drop it off for her, or rake some leaves or something. Just be clear that you're doing it as a friend and not because of parental responsibility. Also get some legit legal advice. Not the a-hole. Based off of her behavior that you were describing, it looks like she is hiding something. In my opinion, based on your story she knows you are not the father and is trying to trap you because you have money. Get a court-ordered paternity test. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.